On today's GM Screen Rant, we talk about when a GM should, or should not, limit options for their players. When an RPG system is first introduced, it's fresh and exciting. Its limited options make balancing a game fairly easy for a GM to handle, especially a newer one. However, as a system grows with time and more and more options make it into the pool of resources both GMs and players have to pull from, balancing the game can sometimes become harder. You have a much larger set of rules you have to know. Not all the features are always very compatible with each other, and sometimes there may be rule combinations that developers didn't notice that utterly and completely break the system. I've noticed that GMs tend to go through waves with this. When they first start, they are often worried about all the rules and tend to restrict players to just the most basic and core of the rule sets. Obviously, players can still have fun with this, that's what it's made for. I've played in many successful games with just these types of restrictions, but it's always the desire of players to branch out and experiment with all these fun toys that they see in the various expansions for the rule system. The next step many GMs take at this point is to go to the other extreme and just allow everything. In this, uh, if this is an older or seasoned system, you, you are a newer GM, this could quickly become the stuff of nightmares, especially if you have a mix of power gamers and non-power gamers. Experienced GMs tend to handle this a little bit better, and will often find their comfort zone from here. So the third step, which applies more to the inexperienced GMs, is now for them to panic at how hard it was to manage such a large set of options and to go back to usually a rather severe level of restrictions. I've seen GMs flip-flop back and forth between such extremes repeatedly, sometimes taking years to finally settle into comfort zones for them and their players. Hell, I remember doing this mu much the same thing in 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Starting out just using the player's handbook and a few of the brown books, older players will understand what I mean. Uh, then when the player's options series books came out, I, I said, oh, go nuts, experiment! I still suffer cold sweats when thinking of what happened after that. Thankfully, I'm good at repressing things, so we're just going to do what everyone should do with trauma, bottle it up deep inside and let it stay there for as long as possible. That's your psychiatrist issue to deal with, not yours. After years, decades, of experience with GMing, we've come with a simple slogan when deciding what options you use when creating the setup for your campaign. Just because you have a garage full of tools doesn't need, mean you need to use them all on every job. I've mentioned this before, so I'll mention it again. The GM's goal, at least hopefully, is to craft an experience that is both fun and memorable for the players to play through. So when sitting down to make your game, the best thing you can do is talk to the players first. So sit down your socially maladjusted geek herd and actually attempt to communicate with them about their expectations and ideas in an adult and productive manner. This is usually where the cattle prod comes into play. But ask them, what do they want to play? Are there any themes they'd like you to explore? Are there any particular options they want to use and what is their reason for it? And finally, saying no to special snowflake Jimmy for wanting to play the demigod cyborg entity that is suspiciously named Unicron. From these conversations, sit down and carefully select which tools work for the campaign you have planned, which ones fit well together, and which ones you're comfortable with. Try to give the players a little more leeway on options within the system, but not too much. The storyline and actual encounter planning is important, but they all rely on the foundation of which system options you're basing this off of. Some GMs are comfortable with the approach of, use whatever you want, go and not take a gift to shits. From experience, I believe the majority of GMs that think they can handle this really can't. So streamline it a little. Give them some options, but carefully select what makes sense for the story you're trying to put together. Carefully select which options. Don't use all the tools in your garage, but feel free to use a few that should make your life easier. Hopefully today's rant was helpful. Have a good one, eh?